April 1st, uh, what is it, 9 a.m. And what I have here is a book that I've had for quite a while, uh, Strange Stories, Amazing Facts, uh, and it was published by Reader's Digest, and which the copyright date on this, as you can see, is hopefully you can see, um, yeah, okay, 19, oh, 1978, I'm really getting sped up with this stupid camera because there we go, or 76, <laughs> yeah, great eyes, huh, anyways, so bicentennial, <coughs> yeah, so-called bicentennial year, um, and, well, we are having a topic, a conversation that is really starting to pick up, and I do believe that, that this, uh, the discussions and conversations are going to increase as the year progresses, and that is of UFOs, and of course, future technology. Now, remember, this is from 1976, okay? And in here, we have the 500 mile an hour shuttle. All right, and well, we already know about um, the high speed transits of today, right? And these uh, shuttles that <laughs> go super, super fast. Okay, and so that has become a reality, right? 1976 to now, these shuttles have become a reality. Okay, and so we go into the enigma of the UFO, and of course we have UAPs today, um, and what they're trying to state that anything seen up in the sky um, are UAPs phenomena, whereas uh, UFOs, I believe, could go with the definition of being objects, unidentified flying objects, and there's a difference between objects and phenomena. Okay, now then, so we have a couple being shown here. Now, back in 1967 here in Michigan, uh, the Michigan State Police actually uh, had an encounter along the shoreline of Lake Michigan. And I don't know if, um, if that story or information is out there uh, online today or not. Um, a very interesting story. But there is another documented uh, instance of massive UFO sightings in the year of 1994. Now, I had my own sighting that year, and it was not anything like this. No, it was one of those long, tube-shaped, cylindrical objects that had like a uh, kind of a deep orange glow to it. And there was a, a situation, supposedly, out in outer space to where a cord had been released and it tangled, uh, well it kind of like, once it uh, came released it was like a rubber band and it snapped back to like I guess its original position or something and it was like a spring, okay, and they're saying, uh, accord, according to uh, reports that I have come across over the years, that that was not actually a UFO, that it was actually because of this situation that happened in outer space, which I highly doubt, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm still kind of investigating that. But what I'm going to do is include a link to a, it's kind of a lengthy video, but it is about that case that happened here in Michigan in 1994. Uh, where there was many, many witnesses that seen these objects flying over Lake Michigan. And it was even documented on Doppler radar 
by one of our local meteorologists in which he was tracking these objects on his Doppler radar at the time. And he is being interviewed within this video, uh, as well as uh, someone else uh, that was involved at the time. And the reason why I'm bringing this up once again is because of how much the narrative is kicking out there today about these objects and phenomenons. And, and because it is significant to me because of course I, I you know, lifelong Michigander, uh, I've had my own uh, encounters and experiences and of course I have recordings. Uh, not great recordings, but um, hey, as far as I'm concerned they are recordings nonetheless and documented evidence even though it's not that great of evidence um, and which I have to believe that I will be having encounters again, uh, whether they're recorded encounters or what have you. Uh, um, there's more to come in the future. And, and whether it is uh, mass deception or what have you, it doesn't really matter. This is already, <laughs> as you might say, in the books. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go ahead and click that link. Uh, take, take a little bit of time. Uh, so you know a little bit of the history, because, of course, history can predict the future. And the more knowledge that you have over what might happen in the future, the better off you just might be. You never know. So on that note, I'll leave it there and I'll leave the description or uh, leave the link in the description box and I hope you enjoy. And have yourselves a great one. We'll see you once again on this flippy side. <laughs> yeah, it never fails, you know, I always end it and then, well, hindsight being twenty twenty, I always come up with something else to add on. <laughs> uh, and if you're not used to it now, um, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, uh, so as I was reviewing uh, the previous clip, I had made mention of you know, future technology and whatnot. And, and this is, you know, some of uh, the illustration here of so-called future technology. Now, can you see what that is? Those are like city cities built on asteroids, okay? Now, That picture, when I seen it, struck me quite hardcore because within a lot of my past sky observations, uh, there are certain clouds that actually take on the appearances like you are looking up at asteroids or boulders floating around in the sky but are just, you know, white in appearance. And with them, uh, and I'm talking about uh, political members of our government uh, coming out and talking about uh, their uh, debriefing over UFOs, UAPs, and, and how a couple of them made mention of uh, interdimensional beings and objects. Um, you know, it's not too far for me to imagine that what I have been capturing might actually be what you are seeing here. I mean, seriously, look at all these little lights. How many people out there have been bringing up the, the questionability over seeing what appears to be lights in within clouds? Mm-hmm. Just something to ponder, right? And hopefully this uh, recording here isn't going to come out upside down like my previous one did. <laughs> to where I had to throw it through an editing uh, process and, and rotate <laughs> the scenes. But anyways, 
Uh, so one more thing that I would like to bring up is that uh, the meteorologist taking part in that 1994 uh, situation with these objects all over Lake Michigan uh, that was causing uh, so many 911 calls to come in uh, to local dispatch and now I wonder about the disappearance of our local televised Doppler radar channel we no longer have a Doppler radar channel in our area on television and <laughs> there could be a great many reasons or excuses for why but I had to pose a little bit of curiosity of maybe my videos might have influenced the factor of them doing away with that televised channel of Doppler radar have I been exposing too much over the use of Doppler radar because I you know I've, I've got quite a few Doppler radar videos out there that shows very strange anomalies So, with this added video that I provide the link for, and knowing how much they used the Doppler radar system for tracking the UFO back in 1994 through a local meteorologist, you have to connect everything. Because we don't get answers anymore. We get a lot of confusion in order to create chaos. We are the ones that have to come up with the answers. We cannot rely on any so-called professionals or, or scientists especially. Um, you know, I don't trust astrophysicists. I don't, you know, uh, so many professions out there. And the thing is, is these so-called professionals have been duped through their own training, if you ask me. Because when reality speaks, truth is silenced. And of course, we are not allowed to expose too much reality these days. Regardless of how much real information is out there such as like over certain illnesses and so-called <laughs> treatments yeah so anyways with all that being said keep your eyes to the skies it's going to be an interesting year it's the year of the dragon it's, it's it's t the time to wear the reality of dragons will be exposed to. <laughs> we'll see you once again back on the flippy side. Take care.